it's Greg Becky here. In this video, I'm going to show you what you get in the Mavic Air Combo. I'm also going to walk you through step by step the DJI Go 4 app. And then I'm going to take you on the first maiden flight. And I'll give you a few beginner mistakes to avoid. And I'll also show you how to improve your exposure and your color. So make sure you stick around and watch this entire video. Now this video is for beginners, so people who just picked up their Mavic Air. If you're already an experienced pilot, this probably isn't for you. Or it's also for people who are looking for a refresher. All right, let's get right into the video. In this first part of the video, we're going to have a look at everything you get in the Mavic Air Fly More combo. And it's a much better value than just getting the Mavic Air. And do a Google search, because I was able to find the Mavic Air Fly More combo for the same price that other people were selling just the Mavic Air. So I saved $300 by getting it at Walmart. So do a Google search before you go out and buy this. You get the travel carrying case, you get a couple of extra batteries. We'll go through everything in this video. You get extra rotor blades. Now when you first get it, you'll see there's sticky tabs all over the aircraft. So make sure that you peel each one off. Just have a good look around, take all those sticky tabs off. And then what you need to do is remove this gimbal cover before you do a flight. But don't lose that because you'll need that to transport it in the future. So once you have all the sticky tabs off, the gimbal cover off, then you extend all the different arms. I'll show you how to extend the landing gear in a second as well. And then there's a look at it there. Now it comes with two sets of extra rotor blades. Just be conscious if you go to change those where you took them from because there's little white lines on them and there's other ones that don't have that. So you want to make sure you have the right rotor blade in the right spot when you go to change those something to just be aware of so i'll show you how to change your battery as well so there's a look at the different sensors there's a look at the gimbal now there's your battery you just push on those tabs and the battery pops right out and then to put it back in place you just push down on it and you'll hear a click and then you'll see those red tabs go out so there's your usb-c port and your sd card fits right there now here's a look at your controller now when you open it up there's little arms that you have to screw into place that will allow you to control it sort of like an Xbox controller. You'll see that in a second. And then you can see there's the different buttons there as well. Now there's the arms. You have to take those out and then you have to screw them into place. So don't lose those. But if you do, the Fly More combo comes with an extra set of those. So you'll be able to replace them if you happen to lose them somewhere, which is handy. So you can see all the different buttons here. We have the home button, the sport button, the function button, the on and off switch. So just go through your manual and just become aware of that. That's how you take a picture. That's for video. Below that is how you adjust the height of your gimbal in flight. And you can see there's the lightning cable. So it's set up for an iPhone when you first get it. And then you just plug your phone in there. There's another USB-C port. Now, there's a battery charging hub that allows you to charge up to four batteries at once. And how it works is, let's say one battery is at 75%, it'll charge that battery first and then the next one and then the next one after that. So it's pretty handy to have those extra batteries because you're going to need them. Now here's a look at other things. You've got the blade protectors, extra rotor blades, all the cables you'll need. So it's a much better value in my opinion to get the Fly More combo, especially if you can find it on sale. And there's another look at the travel carrying case and the case for your aircraft as well. Now there's the lightning cable. To go to charge it, you have to pull that out and then use the adapter. And that plugs in to the adapter right there. You can see with the USB-C. So Make sure you look for that adapter. I found that tricky. Also, a good tip is to read all of these manuals. And then once you've done that, download the DJI Go 4 app. I suggest picking up a set of ND filters because this will help you to control your exposure. So for example, if it's a bright sunny day, you can't adjust your aperture. You can only adjust your ISO or your shutter speed. So an ND filter is perfect for that. Also, you'll need a memory card. And I also have a carrying case. You'll see that. That just makes it easy to travel. All right, so here we are. We've opened up the app. And you can see here where it says start flight. Just click on that, start flight. Now you can see this is the camera looking at another camera. So I've got the Mavic Air camera initiated. Now let's start at the top left and walk around in clockwise position. So I'm going to click where it says ready to go. And if I click there, you can see we have overall status. And then if you look to the right, it says normal latest firmware. So when I first initiated this, I had to do an update. It failed the first time, it got hung up at 99%. So if that happens to you, turn off your controller, turn off your Mavic Air, turn off your phone, and then reboot everything and try it again. I did that, it worked the second time. So below that, we have flight mode. You can see that's optical or OPTI, I assume it's optical. And then you see set max flight altitude. By default, it's at 120. You can adjust it between 120 or 20 and 500. You've got your compass there. I had to calibrate my compass. All you have to do, it'll let you know. You just click on calibrate and then it'll walk you through it. I had to move my uh, Mavic Air around in different directions. 
to help calibrate it. And then you see we have everything else set to normal. If there's a warning there, then click on that. That means you probably have to do an update or something like that. And then we have our controller mode. When you first set this up, you probably chose the controller mode. They recommend it mode two, so that's what I chose. You can see I have my remote control battery. That's 97%. Also, when I did the initial setup, I had the FN button. I set that to gimbal recenter. And then for the C button on the controller, I put advanced camera settings so I can go in and adjust those camera settings on the fly. Then we can see our aircraft battery there, our aircraft battery temperature, our gimbal status. I don't have an SD card in there, although I have two 64 gigabyte cards that I'm going to use. So I'm going to just click on the X. I'm going to close that out. So you can see right here, we're going to move over where you see OPTI. Then we have our satellites. Then we have our Wi-Fi. And if we click on any of these things, it should give us updates. So that was just beside the Wi-Fi. It's the visual navigation settings. So I'm going to turn these on. So I have enable obstacle avoidance. I'm also going to turn on the next one. Enable horizontal obstacle avoidance and tap fly. Enable backward flying. Enable obstacle avoidance. So I just have all of these on. Go to the bottom, we have advanced. I have all of those on as well. And again, you can see we have our battery power at the top. Now, if you look at the far right where we have the three dots, if I click there, you can see we have access to all of the menu settings. So we have our controls. You can see we have everything right here. So I'm gonna go from the top down and we're gonna go through this. So I click here and we should go into that, which is this, what we're seeing right here. And you can see here we have our home point settings. So the one on the left there, that's going to be returning to home. So let's say you were at a rock by a river and you click there, it's going to return to that spot. Now let's say you walk 20 yards from where you started the aircraft, it will return where you were. So if you want to return to where you are now currently, if you've walked 20 paces, the one beside that, that will go to where you are at the end. So I hope that makes sense. So if you're going to be stationary and you're not going to move around, pick the one on the left, if you think you're going to follow your drone like 20, 30 feet or more, pick the one on the right and it'll go back to where you are at the end of the flight. Then I have multiple flight modes. I have that engaged. And then return to home altitude. You can adjust this. So when it's returning to home, you've got that range there where 20 to 500 meters. That'll go down to that altitude when it's returning home. And then you can enable beginner mode if you're just starting, if you want to do that. Again, you can adjust your set max flight altitude here. And you can enable max distance. And then again, you have the advanced settings. And then you get into adjusting the sensitivity of your controls. I'd wait till you get a little bit more experience before you do any of that. So now if we go to the one below that, you can say again, we have enable vision positioning and obstacle check. I have all those checked. Go down to the little robot guy there. Here's the stick mode. And this is where our button customization is. You can make some changes there. And then if we go to the Wi-Fi signal. You can see our Wi-Fi settings. And if I click here, you can see our aircraft battery warning. So this is by default set to 30. You can lower it to 25%. It's really a personal choice. It's up to you. Below that, we have the gimbal mode. And you can change that. So it's on follow or you can have FPV. And then we have our advanced settings here. And then there's different configurations. So what you can do is you can have different speeds for your gimbal and things like that. So for example, configuration one, max gimbal pitch speed. I've reduced mine to about four and that will slow it down. So that will give you like a slower pan. So you can play around with those if you'd like and have three different settings for that if you want. Now let's look at our camera settings. So if we look just below our top column there, you can see we have 4K and we have 30 frames per second. So if I click on that, nothing happens. So I'll go to my camera settings. So if you look at the red button there, that's your record on and off. There's three little dots below that. If you click there, you can see you can choose between auto or manual. And if you look at the very top, you can see there's like an aperture, then there's a camera, and then there's a gear. So top left. So that would be your video settings. I suggest shooting on manual mode. That way you're not going to get a variance in your light. If it's on auto and you go to a brighter scene, it'll get darker. This will keep your exposure the same. So by going to manual, and let's say you're shooting outdoors, I would choose the lowest aperture if it's a sunny day, or not the lowest aperture, but the lowest ISO. So there's your ISO setting would be 100. Now you could adjust that and you can see how that gets brighter as I adjust my ISO. And then you can see here, the zebras are the overexposure warning. I have that set on, I'll show you how to set that in a second. So technically how it would work like a camera would, or if you're shooting video, if you were shooting at 4K 
30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be at 60. That's what it should be set at. So we're just inside. When we're outside, it's going to be a lot brighter than that. Now what you can do, and I mentioned earlier, is you can put a neutral density filter over your lens and that'll knock down some of that daylight, which will allow you to shoot at a lower shutter speed. There's our ISO. And again, if I go to, that's our shutter speed there. And the ISO is above that. So it's really getting that combination of the shutter speed and the ISO and to get a better manual exposure. Now for camera, if you click on the camera, you can see that we have video size. If you click there, you can choose different sizes. I'm set for 4K, 30 frames per second. And you can see we have different sizes there as well. If we go back, we have our video format, MP4 or MOV. And below that, I suggest you put your white balance on custom. So if you're flying outdoors, daylight is estimated at about 5,600 Kelvin. So if you pick that, then your white balance isn't going to fluctuate. So that's why you want to shoot on manual is so that the light exposure doesn't fluctuate and you want to put your white balance on manual as well so that doesn't fluctuate now as far as style i'm going to choose this so you have on the far left at the bottom custom zero that would be the sharpness the middle would be contrast and saturation i'm going to take my contrast down i do that when i shoot video as well and then that will allow me to do more in post as far as the contrast now the color if you want to do a little more color grading you'll have a little bit more leeway if you use D cine like you might have a little bit more dynamic range as well so I'm choosing that so those are my settings there and you can play around with those if you'd like now as far as the gimbal if you see right here on the right you can see there's the blue dot that would be your gimbal height and that's when you would have the FN that would recenter your gimbal now you can see also too there's a play button at the bottom right that's if you want to play back your video or your pictures and then you can see here we have our radar and that's showing the distance to objects in the background. And then we also have at the bottom our speed and our height and our distance. Now we also have a map. If you click on that, it becomes full screen. So you can see a map. And then again, if I click on the square image, then we're back to what the aircraft is seeing. Now if I click here, we have different modes. So for example, if you chose cinematic mode, that would slow the aircraft down a bit more. So it would put the brakes on a little slower and create more of a cinematic stop. So you can experiment with these. There's active track, which will follow you. If you're walking, you can set that to follow you or follow someone else. So you could explore those modes as well. Now, there's a couple of different things here. There's the home button just above that, and then that will bring it back to home. But above that, if you wanted to start the aircraft, you'd click on that and you'd slide that to take off. I'm just going to click cancel right now. And if you go to the DGI at the top, that takes you back to the start of the app. And you can see here that there's a slide to update. So there's an update. So I'm going to have to update this. Hey, everybody, it's Craig Becht. And here we are for our maiden voyage of the Mavic Air. This is my first flight. I've got everything ready to go. It says ready to go. I'm going to make sure that it's set for uh, to come back to me as far as where I want it to return to. So home base. And I'm going to say, OK, so I've set the current position as the home base and then I'm ready to go. So you push both joysticks down and in and then up. I'm just going to back away, give it some room to take off, and then I'm going to go up. Before you do your first flight, I suggest you look and make sure that you're not in a no-fly zone, and also maybe practice with the flight simulator that comes with the part of the app. Now this is one of the features that you could just tap and it'll circle around your subject. I found that a lot easier than trying to do it myself. So check out the uh, smart capture features as well. They're really handy. But you can see it's great footage. This was shot in 4K. Hey everybody, it's Craig back to here again. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up for this video. And if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them down below. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, I come up with a new photography video every week. So if you want to catch that, just hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification as well. Also, feel free to share this video on the web if you found it helpful. Just look below, click on share. Also, I'm going to put some helpful links in the description box below this video. Make sure you check those out as well. All right, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. If you're new here and you're not already a subscriber, my name is Craig Becta, and if you're into photography, you should hit that subscribe button right now and also hit that bell notification because every week I release a new photography tutorial. Everything from portrait lighting tips to portrait retouching tips and a whole lot more. So go ahead, click on that subscribe button and hit that bell notification. All right, thanks.